on the trail of an arahant maharahatun vadimaga osse giving up part 1 the english translation of the series of articles on sunday divina by indrajit subasinghe translated by sunil vettemuni resource contribution sudat chandrasekhar may this humble effort be a help strength and an easy path only for the clergy and the layman who have clearly understood the in and out of this ruthless and dreadful journey of sansara and are trying hard with much determination and perseverance to realize the four noble truths within this life span itself may all of you be wise enough to get the maximum use of what you need or what can ease your effort and also to ignore what you do not need what you do not accept or anything false in facts may you be merciful to all may all beings be happy and be a help unto themselves noted by the reverend thero this work is dedicated my reverend men- mentor most venerable dodampala chandrasiri mahanayaka thero and all venerable bikus who were towers of strength behind me during this worthy cause and may all of them be blessed with good health and longevity and realize four noble truths within this life itself let there be no distance between you and nature in this entire system of world elements if we were to inquire where lies freedom as per its exact meaning then without any hesitation the answer lies in the noble arahant the arahant is the perfect image of total freedom his mind is equated to a pure white cloth not even the tiniest needle point of dirt can be found while the arahant lives in the present he draws pictures on this white cloth and they erase at the same time he draw, he draws again and erases again an arahant does not accumulate or bundle together those pictures it's a non defiled paint he uses to draw those pictures there is no thickness roughness attachment or collision in them they are burnt out paint hence his white cloth mind which constantly rises and ceases and is always pure the mind that sees no being or person his mind having perceived impermanence draws pictures which erase off therefore his life is always light simple clear and open he is an image of freedom those monks and laymen who are in search of nibbana are in search of that nature of freedom freedom lies in life where all attachments are emptied having set aside all accumulated worldly belongings one leaves the household to become a monk why have you so arrived having set aside all such things it is to let go all those things which were set aside reflect diligently setting aside the setting aside and letting go is as wide as the earth and the sky once becoming a monk 
one must train to let go those things which were set aside. What are those that we were set aside? Father, mother, relatives, businesses, lands and houses, civil status. In short, you have set aside such things that are binding to the six senses. To let go of them is to be freed of them. Now the goal is clear. If that is so, one should search for a non-accumulative place, conducive for the training of letting go. What is that non-accumulating place? The place where defilements are not accumulated, the place where the mind is at ease. If one cannot find such a hermitage or an empty place, then one should get, a, get near a teacher who develops the path to an isolated hut. Those places were one those places where one could be cornered to attachments such as to hermitages, attachment to fellow monks, attachment to conduct, attachment to gods or brahmas, attachment to views of bodhisattva must be avoided. The nature of such places are only conducive to safeguard the teachings and beneficial for rebirth and not beneficial for the purpose of the attainment of Nibbana. By adhering to the above nature, you will only oppose the path to Nibbana. It still may be your nature to move along with the waves. You have left the fires of the household, not for the purpose of riding the pleasant waves of the norm, but to swim upstream of the current. If you are to fail, you will come under the influence of local and foreign relationships, fellow and teacher bonds, etc. Do not get attached or hold to anything. Learn to systematically drop off all what has been held. Think that with age, having understood life, that you are a complete person who has arrived with the purpose of this teaching, the sasane. However, you must guard against any overestimation of yourself. You must know that there is a higher conduct, sila, than the Samanera conduct or the Upasampada conduct. That conduct cannot be received by someone else. It's self-achieved by enhancing one's own effort towards both Dhamma and the sila. Sila means only a tool for the comfortable achievement of Nibbana but not a rope which is being tied to your hands and feet, nor is it a prop which kills your freedom. Like the paratrooper who uses his parachute for the purpose of the descent, make use of the sealer for the comfortable achievement of Nibbana. As soon as the trooper touches the ground, he releases the chute just so Sila means that which is released after having correctly understood the teaching and not something which is held hard. Holding to Sila gives into its desires. Desires do not lead one to Nibbana, but it leads to more being or Bhava. One must carefully watch that one is not trapped in thoughts such as I am the sealer, or oh, the sealer is in me. Sealer means mindfulness and presence of mind. Dhamma means the true nature of things. Nature of the Dhamma is anicca, which means impermanence. 
to observe impermanence with mindfulness and with the presence of mind is to live in the dhamma and sila sila is a essential not to make repeated wrong doings the putujjana mind is of the nature to do wrong having clearly understood and seen this one must weed out wrong conduct to dedicate oneself just to sila is a weakness without dedicating to sila one must remove one's weakness with mindfulness and the presence of mind if there are 100 books written on sila and having stacked them on top of the other then on top of all place a label with the buddha word chetanaham bhikkhave kammang vadami intention monks is kamma i declare if one is not confident lacks talent is conceited agitated suffering from the inability to attain the fruits of the path then consider to train under a teacher in a disciplined manner if not you will be lost do not overestimate your ability be intelligent in making decisions do not be slow or hurried be freed from timetables pre-planning or a set order in just the same natural way the moon sun ocean and the earth behave without any effort develop the path to nibbana within your own natural way with ease be a part of nature do not keep a gap between you and nature compare your thoughts with the sun which rises or the moon which descends be a warrior who travels upstream in search of freedom having paused to reflect on the qualities of the buddha continuously contemplate your reason for your monkhood every moment you contemplate in the in such a manner you see the buddha through your own experience observe your weakness with humility humility does not mean timidity or shyness a bhikkhu should be the one on this earth who chases after a target with all might there is no clever person in the three worlds who could hurry him like the lonely elephant who has taken refuge in the mighty jungle he himself must search for the freedom he seeks in this journey he does not notice the night the day the rain the cold or the hunger none so has control over him like the warrior on this earth he chases after the defilements of mara the freedom he seeks must be realized by himself it cannot be done by a god or a brahma they only can give their blessings in your presence they are a mere second fiddle having made this universe tiny and placing it on both your hands you be the sage the person who is released from this world this is only possible if you succeed in taking the serious decision on either death or relinquishment then the freedom you search can be meaningful and can be attained